Okay. And the next thing, well, first thing I'm going to do is to turn off the screen blanker and the power saving because obviously I'm recording this. Um, and it's happened before where the screen goes blank and obviously you can't see anything. So it's power management, turn off the energy saving and then turn off the uh, session suspend. So that's optional if you want to do that. I'm doing that purely because I'm recording the screen. Next thing I'm going to do is going to become root with that command sudo su minus. Uh, as most of the initial work is going to be done as root. We then create a temporary user called LFS where we do the, uh, or we create the temporary environment, the temporary build environment. And finally, we go into true environment, um, which is as root to build the um, actual live, the final build environment. So start at the beginning. I'll quickly zip through. I'll just go back again. Um, I'll quickly zip through the first couple of um, sections. So the preface and the introduction. Uh, it's just like how the book's laid out and the changes since the last release. We get to work with the um, part two, uh, chapter two onwards. And then we start building in chapter five. But there's a lot of information, a lot of pre preliminary stuff we need to do to set up the system. Um, if you appreciate at the moment, we've got a Windows system on the hard disk and we want to replace that with the Linux from scratch system. So it's things like creating partitions and so on. But first of all, if we just quickly nip through the uh, first few parts. So there's a bit of information about how Linux from scratch came ar about. Uh, Jared Beekmans is the chap who first wrote this book initially and released it to the world. Who Linux from Scratch is for? Well, obviously, it's for you because you're listening to this video, you're interested in building it. Target architectures, um, specifically, the book caters for 32 bit Intel and 64 bit Intel stroke AMD CPUs. Um, you can use the instructions to build for different architectures, but um, th there'll be some changes that are needed. Uh, you can't just copy and paste. The instructions for different architectures. There's some information there about um, build times and build size based on this core i7-4790 system. So it's quite an old system now. It's probably nearly 10 years old, that system. Um, so these have obviously would have changed a newer system. It's going to, they've got four hours there of build time. It's obviously going to be a lot less on a newer machine. Um, and the build size is probably going to be bigger in both cases as the packages have uh, increased over time. Prerequisites, there's some information there about what's required from you, uh, your knowledge of Linux and Scratch, uh, sorry, knowledge of Linux and specifically Linux at the command line terminal. I remember when I first built um, Linux from Scratch, which was version 4, so it's around about 2003 or so. Um, it was a situation where I'd used the terminal before. I knew a bit about the commands and how to navigate, but I was extremely green behind the ears and I didn't realize how green I was until I started with Linux and Scratch. And it was quite hard initially uh, to A, know what to look for on the internet in terms of solving problems and B, knowing actually what, to do in the case of a, a problem. Um, so it does help if you have got some grasp of basic tools in Linux and, and know your way around the uh, command prompt. Having said that, um, I persevered with Linux from scratch. It did tell me not only a lot about the command prompts in Linux, but obviously how the Linux system works, which is its prime objective. But certainly, um, another thing about that first time, I remembered I wasn't aware of SSH or remote connections or anything like that. Um, so I typed everything in by hand and it wasn't until obviously later on building Linux from scratch and beyond Linux from scratch that I found that you can do so much more. Um, but certainly typing in commands by hand, not only do does it make you stop and see what you're typing, which copying and pasting, as I'm going to show you on the video, uh, doesn't let you do. It, it it gives you a chance to stop and read and try to understand what each command is doing. So if, if you really do want to learn 
Linux from scratch and more so if you want to learn more about commands that you can use and techniques and so on. Um, you know, the expert editors and people who've contributed to creating the Linux from scratch manual have used some commands which allow you to make some use of the power of Linux um, and uh, it's certainly done me a lot of good by learning learning from the book in terms of what, what can be done with some commands. So let's move on to Linux from scratch and standards. So they try to adhere to these three standards as closely as possible. You can read all about that there. Uh, it also shows you which packages are required by different parts of Linux and Scratch and beyond Linux and Scratch to satisfy the requirements completely. If you appreciate Linux and Scratch is just a really basic system so it's not complete in terms of for example the LSB requirements. Then there's reasons or rationales as to why certain packages are used in this book so uh, although over time the number of packages has increased probably probably guess by at least 50 percent there's a uh, quite a number of packages now there are valid reasons for why these packages are here um, either it's uh, as time's gone on certain packages are required more dependent packages so it means more packages need to be built in order for a, a later package to be built um, things like python i don't think ever used to be part of the system but now it seems to be relied on by everyone and his mother to do something in, in the Linux world. Um, so uh, there's other things, even even this Perl module, um, although Perl's always been a requirement, uh, there was no Perl modules originally as I, as I can remember. Things like Z standard, that, that compression never existed before as a requirement. So you can see there's all these different packages that are now necessary to build Linux from scratch. Typography, it shows you um, the different fonts and typefaces used to indicate different things. So generally commands are in bold face uh, in this fixed font, fixed width font, and they're inside these gray boxes. Sometimes a single command is split over two lines. You can detect that because there's this backslash which tells the bash um, shell that this is a single command and the rest of the command exists on the next line. There's other things about uh, information that might appear in the grey box here. There's notes that appear with the yellow background. There's a here to documents you'll see. This is an example of a here to document and so on. So that's again worth reading so you know exactly what you're looking at when you go through the book. The structure, these are the different parts of the uh, manual, the book. And we're currently in, in the introduction. We then prepare for the build in part two. Build the cross tool chain and the temporary tool system. And then the, the actual guts of the Linux and Scratch system, the actual final system that, that forms... Linux from scratch is all in part four. Everything in part three is never used again after part four is built because it's not needed. And then part five has got lots of usual, yeah, useful uh, appendices, as it says, acronyms, terms, acknowledgements, the package dependencies, all the all the binaries and libraries that are included in the packages is a, a very useful resource if you want to learn more about the individual packages packages themselves. Errata and Security Advisory is well. It's got a link there. If I click on that, it's probably not going to work. Um, but as the yeah, it's got a 404. Uh, that will that will work when when they've updated the links on the website. Um, as the weeks go on, there'll be security releases for various packages, and they keep this up to date now quite rigorously. Um, never used to do this. Uh, yeah, that's, so that's worth checking if you're coming later on. Uh, it's probably not that necessary if you're just building Linux from scratch just for the educational aspect and you're not going to be uh, using the system afterwards. But if you do think you might be using the system afterwards, then you probably do want to take note of any security updates. Um, 
just to keep yourself safe. And there's a list of advisories there as well. So I'll move on to the introduction. And first bit, it goes into a little bit more detail about each individual chapter and what it does. And we'll be seeing that as we go along. Then there's a page about what's new since the last release. So all these packages have been upgraded, mostly between versions there are upgrades to packages. Some packages don't really change that much, um, but that's not a bad thing. It's the, Some of these packages are 20 years old or more, and it just means that they're, they're getting towards a point where they're extremely mature. So uh, it's not a bad thing that those packages haven't been updated. Uh, some packages have been added. Again, as I said before, there's probably dependencies of certain packages here, either to get them to work or they provide some functionality that is uh, Linux from scratch is dependent on, and some removed packages. I believe this EU dev has been removed in favor of UDEV, and this package hyphen config has been removed in place of this updated package config. So that's the reason why those have disappeared. There's a change log, so you can see going backwards in time, um, all the changes. So most of these, as you can see, are updates. Occasionally there's changes to the book. Um, as you can see, there's very rarely any problems with anything. It's just generally maintenance to keep the book up to date, which gives you an idea of how um, how good the Linux and Scratch book is. It used to be a little bit flaky, I found. Sometimes things would work and other times things wasn't, but they do take a lot of care with Linux and Scratch and it's it's extremely reliable now. Um, I can't say the last time that I've built Linux from Scratch and suspected it was something in the book that was wrong or not quite right or didn't cater for some permutation. Uh, it's it's very rigorous how they keep it. The bit beyond Linux and Scratch is a bit more, a bit more of a Wild West type thing. Um, but then that is a much more complex and bigger beast. Uh, so that's uh, quite understandable. It's it's also a different beast as well. Linux and Scratch is a recipe. You follow it from A to Z in sequence, exactly what it says in the book, and that's it. If you do that, you'll get a working system. Um, if you do miss something and something's not working, there's a very, very good chance it's something you've done. It's not, not an error in a book. Beyond the Linux from scratch, it's a bit more, you pick what you want to install. And therefore, you imagine a number of permutations of packages uh, where you might pick one thing but not another, but somebody else might pick that other thing and not the one that you've picked. There's loads of permutations, and that interaction may mean that something may not work based on how you installed it or the audit you installed things. So it's a bit more uh, unpredictable beyond the Linux from scratch. But certainly Linux from scratch, if, if you've got a problem, it's almost undoubtedly something down to a user error, down, down to something you, you've done yourself rather than a problem with the book. Resources, if you want assistance or more information, um, there's all different ways you can contact people and get help. And here is a page about getting help. And it gives you information on how to ask for help as well, what to mention and so on. Um, I do get questions asked on my channel sometimes. And sometimes you, you get some, you know, one line question. There's like no information. It's a bit hard to help people if they're not going to put the F in it effort in either to look for help for themselves or to even bother to give some information uh, with the question they're starting. So I, I tend not to reply to, to questions like that because I don't know what they're asking. You know, if they're not, if there's not enough information, how can you interpret what's being asked? You, you could guess, but you might be barking up the wrong tree. So by providing as much information as possible, and as I say, doing a bit of work yourself, uh, you're more likely to get a response and more importantly, a response that will work for you. Uh, there's no point in wasting your time, my time, anybody else's time trying to get to the crux of what the problem is, uh, coming up with solutions that are, are the wrong solutions. 
so it's definitely worth reading this if you this this page if you do get stuck and you do need help um uh, i've said before and i'll say again I'm, I'm not an expert in linux and scratch it really at the end of the day it is just about copying the instructions in the book um but i do try to help if i can on my channel but if you do want some expert opinion i'd uh go to the places that are mentioned on this page and the previous page for more detailed response. But as I say, if somebody does ask a question on my channel, I do try and help where I can.